This is the brand new Casio G-Shock Rangeman GPR H1000, and I sure wish they would choose better names, but, but that's what it is. This watch combines the classic G-Shock look and feel with an advanced heart rate sensor, nearly two year long battery life with an asterisk, along with some proprietary training tools from the other fitness watch brand, Polar, which is kind of interesting. I've had this watch for a little over a week now, and in this video today, I wanna to talk about what I've learned about it, what I like about it, and what I don't like about it, because there are a few things. Before we move on, I do wanna mention that I review these watches in more of a fitness and running kind of aspect, and less of being that outdoorsy kind of hiker, hunter market that I think this is marketing towards. So just keep that in mind as we go through this. I should also mention that this video is not sponsored or anything, so yeah. It's just gonna be my my unbiased thoughts. Diving right in, the first thing we need to talk about is the price and options on this watch. So the GPR H1000 comes in two different colors. There's this black version I have here, and then there's a really cool looking yellow version. I wish I got that one. And when it comes to the price of the GPR H1000, it comes in at 500 US dollars, which is very expensive, and I feel like it's a little bit overpriced, but we'll talk about that later in this video. Taking a look at the GPR H1000, as you can see, this is a very, very large watch. This is a thick boy with two C's. The GPR H1000 comes in at a 60 millimeter form factor, this vertical dimension. It's about 53 millimeters wide and it's about 20 millimeters thick. On top of that, this watch comes in at 92 grams, which is pretty heavy, but at this size, that's to be expected. And for a quick size comparison, here's some other watches side by side with the GPR H1000. We've got the Garmin Phoenix 7X, which is the larger 51 millimeter form factor. There's the Instinct 2X here, which is a very similar watch, we'll talk about that later, and the Apple Watch Series 7, which is a 44 or 45 millimeter form factor, just to give you an idea on how big this watch is. And if you're curious, this is what the GPR H1000 looks like on my 165 millimeter circumference wrist. With the size and weight out of the way, I wanna talk about the comfort for a second. Because this is such a big watch, and because I'm kind of a small person, I do find this watch to be a little bit uncomfortable. First of all, the band is not very stretchy, so it's hard to really dial in your fit with this, and that leads to me getting this watch snagged on like my jacket when I'm trying to pull it over my arm. And when I'm trying to sleep at night, I do notice that it's just really big and it kind of feels like I'm wearing a handcuff while I'm sleeping. Now, that's just me. I am a fairly small person. I'm like five foot seven, 150 pounds. So if you are a much larger person, this probably won't be an issue, but I did think it was worth mentioning. Now let's talk about the hardware itself and the design of this watch. And as you can see, this is a chunky watch. Like I said before, this is a G-Shock. You should expect it to look like this. If you don't like G-Shocks, don't watch this video. This thing is built like an absolute tank. It feels like you could strap a grenade to it and it would probably survive. When it comes to the materials in the construction of this watch, it's a combination of different materials. So around the bezel here, these little nubs feel like sort of rubberized, like they do take an impact and they don't really scratch or anything like that. On the edges here, we do have a forged steel construction around the left and right side, and the buttons themselves are stainless steel. Flipping the watch over, you can see the back of the watch is made out of a plastic material that is a bio-based resin. I believe this is some sort of recycled material, so that's good to see. And then the band of the watch, like I said before, is some sort of bio-based rubber as well, and it, but it's not very stretchy. You do have to pull it pretty hard to actually get some stretch out of it. The clasp of the watch is made out of steel, and then there's this band retainer that's also made out of steel. And I, I thought it looked kind of cool originally, but it's not very functional because when you slip the band in there, there's nothing to grip the band. So I did find that the band retainer would sort of wiggle its way off and the strap would pop out after some time of wearing it. Going back to the front of the watch here, you can see there's a lot of like exposed screws and sort of this rugged appearance. But on top of that, it's just really well built. I think they really put a lot of time and effort into how these things go together. Now when it comes to the tactile feel of these buttons, they are a little bit mushy, which is kind of a bummer. Like there's no click to them. You don't really know when you've hit the end of travel, which is something I do appreciate on a watch, especially when I'm not looking at it. Flipping the watch back over right in the middle, you can see we do have an optical heart rate sensor which is new for this line of watches. In the past, a lot of G-Shock watches didn't have this sensor, and now we've got it here, which is good to see. And it does have an SpO2 sensor for blood oxygen saturation levels. And of course, stick around till later in this video when we talk about the accuracy of this sensor. Below that optical heart rate sensor are two little copper contacts, and that's for the included USB charger I've got here. So one end is this kind of spring, you know, clip thing, and then the other end is a USB type A, I wish it was type C, but it's type A. To attach the USB charger, you sort of just open this clip 
put it over the contacts and clip it shut. And after you put it on there, it's really secure. There's no magnets or anything fancy like that. It's simply a spring clip, but it does get the job done. Now let's talk about the display on this watch. This is an MIP display and it's fairly small, around one inch, and it is monochrome. There are no colors on this display. No colors, no high resolution, no touching this display. It's not a touch screen. It's a very simple MIP display, and that's because this is a G-Shock, and it's meant for utility and for crazy long battery life, so they prioritize that. Around that display, all that copper colored material is actually a solar panel to charge the watch up, and if you leave it out in the sun, it will actually charge up when you're in smartwatch mode, which is pretty cool. Now let's talk about the setup and pairing process, with the GPR H1000. And to do that, you will need an app on your phone called Casio Watches. In the past with other G-Shock watches I've tested out on this channel, I have used this app before. And before I didn't totally love it, but it's gotten a lot better over time and they have made some updates that do make it very useful. From the home screen here, you can see we've got this sort of list of G-Shock branding and information. This is something I don't love because every time you boot up the Casio Watches app, you're greeted with this information. And to be honest, I don't care about it. What I do care about is all of my daily health metrics that are found on the My Page button all the way on the right of the screen there. I wish I could set it by default to just open up to this page because this is what I care about and not so much about all this G-Shock stuff. With that aside, I can also click on the My Watch page here, and here's where I can dive into the watch and I can change all the settings I want to. I can go into all the different activities like running, trail running, or walking, and change all the data pages around or change how they're recorded, change my GPS accuracy and all that stuff within this app as well. And on top of that, you can do a lot of other useful things in here, like diving into your widgets, for example, to turn things on or off based on what you want to see on a given day. And of course, other than all the settings of the watch, you can also toggle which watch face you want to use and as you can see there's a few to choose from. With the watch settings out of the way let's go back to that my page option here because this is really where all the useful information lives. So here's where you can scroll through all of your daily life metrics. So they use something called life log and that's just a name for collecting your calories burned and your step count and things like that and if you dive deeper on any of these sort of tiles that represent days, you'll see all that information for a given day. And if we scroll down, we have even more information. For example, we have our cardio load here, which is sort of the training load based on your runs and previous activities. And then at the bottom, we have nightly recharge. Nightly recharge is actually a metric developed by the watch company Polar. Polar has been selling their technology to Casio to implement in their watches as well. And we're seeing that here on the GPR H1000 as well, which is really cool. And even things like this cardio load feature was previously available in Polar watches and now they've licensed it to use in G-Shock watches as well. And when it comes to nightly recharge, what it does is basically give you a score based on your previous night of sleep. And to unlock this, you do need to sleep with the watch for several days. At the bottom of your nightly recharge, you'll actually get some information about what to do with this information. So for example, if you don't know what your ANS charge or your sleep charge means, it actually spells it out in simple terms to let you know what to do with this data. For me, I'm not sleeping very well because I'm getting over a cold right now. And it says right here, you might feel tired after a poor night's sleep, but it's still okay to train today if you feel like it. And if we scroll past that, there's also a breakdown of all of my sleep stages from deep sleep to REM sleep and all of the interruptions. Going back to the previous page in this app though, you can see all of my life log metrics from my previous days of sleep and calories burned and things like that. But if I scroll down, there's other information in here as well. For example, any runs I've done in the past, you can see here's a five and a half mile run I did a couple of days ago. And if I click in on that, I'll get all the data from this particular run, all the breakdowns of calories burned, my pace, my cadence, my stride length, and all these advanced metrics, which is really cool as well. And on top of that, we'll also get a couple of additional polar metrics here as well, including running index, which is basically an estimated VO2 max. Now, unfortunately, for whatever reason, I couldn't get this to work on my GPR H1000. I keep getting it to say no data, even though my runs fall within the criteria for it to work, but it is there, and hopefully that's just a problem with me and not you. And scrolling down further, we do have the cardio load for this particular activity and another polar feature called fuel wise which breaks down your energy used during this particular activity so as you can see during this run i used 68 percent carbs two percent protein and 30 percent fat which is a pretty cool visual another nice feature about the casio watches app is that yes it does sync with strava and apple health as you can see here so you can get all those kudos on strava 
You know what I'm talking about. That's really the Casio Watches app in a nutshell. I'm not gonna go through every little feature of this app because there's a lot, but it does do a lot and it has gotten a lot better over the years, which I do appreciate. When it comes to the user interface, basically by using these up and down buttons here, you'll start scrolling through the various widgets. So I'll click down here. We've got heart rate, we've got compass, altimeter, barometer, almanac, tide graph, blood oxygen saturation levels, breathing exercises, which I think is another polar feature brought into this watch as well, cardio status, life log, nightly recharge, activity log, world time, timer, stopwatch, and notifications. So if I click in on notifications, you can see I've got my emails from Reddit and LinkedIn and some Amazon deliveries, and I can scroll down and dive further and read through these as well. Jumping back up to something like Almanac, this is actually pretty useful. This gives you your sunset and sunrise. Scrolling down again, we've got the blood oxygen saturation level. Now you can do a blood oxygen saturation test on the fly here. It will record that to the watch, and then it will sync it over to your Casio Watches app as well. Unfortunately though, the SpO2 test is not automatic, so if if you're doing something like uh, acclimatizing to given altitudes or elevations while you're climbing a mountain or something like that, this won't do that automatically. You have to do it on demand. Those are just a few examples of the widgets. Now let's jump back out to the home screen here. And now if I hold the top left button here for a couple of seconds, it'll bring me into the settings menu here. From here, you can change the watch settings or you can scroll down. You can force a sync with the Casio Watches app or you can scroll down again. And here's where you find the phone finder. Phone finder is very very useful, I'm glad they have one here. Simply click on it and now you can hear it ringing now and now I can find it between the cushions of my couch or in my car or something like that. Scrolling down one more time, we do have an airplane mode. So if you wanna turn off all the connectivity of the watch, you can do that in one simple click. In terms of smartwatch functionality with the GPR H1000 connected to your phone, as you can see, there's not a ton of features when it comes to how your phone interacts with the watch. Basically, the only interactivity is with the notifications. You can view your emails and text messages and things like that on the watch as they pop up. I wish it had music controls to control the music on my phone for my watch. A lot of other watches have that. And I wish it had a real weather widget to see what kind of weather was happening in real time outside by using the connection to my phone, which again, most smartwatches do. This one doesn't do. Now let's talk about the activity profiles available on the GPR H1000. So if I press the middle button a single time here, it'll drop me into my activity menu. And if I scroll up to the top of the list, you can see it starts off with trekking or hiking. We've got running, biking, gym workout, interval timer, pool swimming, open water swimming, trail running, walking, and other activity, basically a catch-all to collect everything else. As you can see, the activity profiles are somewhat limiting. There's basically not an activity for everything. For example, if you have a Garmin, there's something for soccer and paddle ball and whatever else, you don't get that here. It's pretty much the basics, but that's probably fine for most people. When you do select a workout and press OK, it does take a second to finally load up the workout. It sort of processes for a second. And now it says starting GPS. And here was a pain point for me while using this watch. This watch takes a long time to get a GPS triangulation signal. Like it, it took me five to 10 minutes to get a good position fixed before the watch said I was good to go. And I thought that would just be the first time I use it, but it's basically every time I use this for a run, it takes between two to five minutes to get a lock where all of my other watches lock within like 10 to 15 seconds. And now you can see the data pages for the running activity. At the top of the screen, we have distance. In the middle, we have split time. At the bottom, we have pace. And if I scroll down using the button on the left here, I can switch through all the different pages. All of these activity data pages are fully customizable. You can go into the Casio Watches app, move things around, change data pages, delete data pages, add data pages. Uh, there's not a ton of data to include here. Like there's no advanced running metrics like running power, for example, but everything else, all the basics is pretty much there. However, there is one thing missing from this watch when you're in an activity like trail running or hiking, and that's navigation. The GPR H1000 has no form of navigation other than a basic compass in their elevation navigation menu with the checkpoints that you can add. There's no mapping, no navigation, no breadcrumb navigation, nothing like that, which I do think is kind of a missed opportunity for a watch that's marketed towards like hardcore outdoor enthusiasts. Another thing missing from the GPR H1000 is that it doesn't have 
have the ability to pair with external heart rate sensors, which I do think, again, is a missed opportunity. Now let's talk about battery life on the GPR H1000 because it's both very impressive and also kind of disappointing at the same time, which is very confusing. Let's talk about the impressive part first. If you use this watch in basic smartwatch mode with the heart rate sensor turned off, you'll get about two months of use on the GPR H1000, which is pretty good. You're still gonna see like, text messages pop up and things like that with connectivity to your phone. Even more impressive though is the power saving function, which basically disconnects from your phone in order to preserve battery life to use this as a basic watch. And in that mode, you'll get up to two years or 23 months on a single charge. That's kind of crazy. And of course, because this is a solar powered device, that's two years without solar. So if you do get some sort of sun during that two years, which I hope you do, you might be able to run even longer than that, which is pretty impressive. So if you're just looking for a basic watch that you can use for an extended period of time that you can toggle GPS on and off when you need it, uh, this might be a good option. That's a really long time on a single charge. With that said, let's talk about the GPS battery life on the GPR H1000 because this watch does have a GPS chip inside for recording your location during activities. So this is a little bit confusing. Per activity, you can actually set up how accurate you want your GPS to be and depending on that accuracy will affect your battery life. So in the highest accuracy mode, you can expect about 14 hours in a GPS activity. In normal accuracy mode, you'll get about 16 hours. And in the lowest accuracy setting to preserve battery life, you'll get about 19 hours of use. And again, those GPS battery life specs may change depending on how much sunlight hits the front of the watch during your activity. But this is pretty much ballpark what you can expect. So as a whole, when it comes to the GPS battery life on the GPR H1000, it's not super impressive. Like in that highest accuracy mode, you're only getting 14 hours of use. And if you compare that to the highest accuracy on a $500 Garmin, it's significantly longer. For the most part though, 14 hours of battery life is decent. And if you're just a casual user, who goes on runs here and there, maybe you go on hikes here and there and use the GPS, it's not gonna be a big deal. This is really only going to affect people that are doing ultra marathons or multi-day treks that wanna use GPS, or maybe you're someone who trains every day for multiple hours. With battery life out of the way, let's dive into GPS accuracy because these things kinda of go hand in hand. For testing purposes, I had the GPR H1000 in its highest accuracy setting, which gives me the worst battery life, but I wanted to see how good it could be with the best settings. The the weird thing about all of this GPS data is that in some cases, the GPR H1000 does a really good job. Like it's right in line, if not better than some of the competition in the other test devices I was using. However, in some key areas, it tends to drift way off track for whatever reason. I did notice on one particular run where there was heavy tree cover, it was raining and snowing on that given day, so it was very cloudy. That's where the GPR H1000 struggled in one particular area when I was in the trees. So that might be a limitation of this watch. I'm not totally sure, I'll need to do more testing. I just thought it was worth mentioning. I'd say generally, if I wasn't comparing it between other devices in the same price category, I'd probably not notice these little inaccuracies and maybe it would come off as being sort of mediocre. Now that we've talked about GPS accuracy, we need to talk about heart rate accuracy from the built-in optical heart rate sensor on the back of this watch. This was a pretty big letdown. Unfortunately, the GPR H1000 has been incredibly off in my testing so far. Like I said, I've taken this watch out on a whole bunch of different runs with other test devices, including an ECG sensor on my chest, which is typically the most accurate in what I use as a baseline of comparison. The good news about this bad heart rate accuracy, if you could say that, is that I do have a theory behind this, and that's because this watch is just so big and bulky, and I have fairly small wrists, and the fact that this band is not very stretchy leads to a pretty poor fit when I take this watch out on a run. I can try to dial in the fit as best I can, but when I strap it down, I can't really get it all that tight without like completely crushing my wrist. So I do think I have to wear it kind of loose in order to run with it. And in that case, there's probably some light leaking in. There's probably some movement of the watch as I run. It's probably bouncing around because it does weigh a lot. And I think all of that is leading to this poor accuracy. And unfortunately, because you cannot pair an external sensor to this watch, you're kind of stuck with that less than stellar heart rate data, which I don't love. Keep in mind, this is just my experience so far. All I can share is my data so far, but I have not been impressed. Okay, that brings us to final thoughts and conclusions about the GPR H1000, the G-Shock. What do I think about it so far? Should you run out and buy one? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Let me summarize it this way. The GPR H1000 
is a really cool G-Shock. If you are a G-Shock fan, you don't particularly care so much about recording your runs and getting the most accurate data. You just want a G-Shock that has all the newest features. It's got some smartwatch features, it's got that polar technology for sleep tracking and, and wellness tracking. It's pretty decent in that respect. And in that case, if you love G-Shocks and you love to look at this, well, then yeah, go and spend 500 bucks on it. On the other hand, if you're just an everyday person looking to buy a fitness watch in this $500 price category, I do think there are better options out there. And if you want that rugged look and monochrome display and solar functionality, I would say check out the Garmin Instinct 2X because this watch has a pretty similar design aesthetic. I mean, up to you, beauty, beauty's in the eye of the beholder here, but these two watches have a similar vibe going on, even though the, the Instinct 2X is a bit subdued. The Garmin Instinct 2X has Garmin's body battery and stress tracking and a whole bunch of other wellness tools. It's got navigation and mapping on board with breadcrumb navigation. It's got way more watch faces and customization on board with Garmin Connect IQ. And on top of all of that, it has a physical flashlight. There's an LED flashlight built in, which has proven to be very useful in my experience so far. And to top it off, it's got great GPS and heart rate accuracy as well. Ultimately, it's going to boil down to you and what you want. And I think in this case, that $500 price tag is really buying your way into that G-Shock branding with incredible build quality. It'll be the only watch around when a bomb goes off and I get that and that's really what this is designed to do. For everybody else, check out the Garmin Instinct 2X. Check out a Coros Pace 3 at half the price. There's a lot of other options. You get what I'm saying here. But that's really it. Those are my thoughts on the Casio G-Shock GPR H1000 and what I think about it so far. And now's the point of the video where I want to hear from you. Do you like this watch? Do you have it? Are you a G-Shock fan? Has the G-Shock branding swayed you? Are you gonna pick this thing up? Let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know what other watch out there compares to this watch other than the Instinct 2X. And of course, while you're down there leaving that comment, if you found this video fun or entertaining, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. I would really appreciate that. And finally, while you're down there in the description, check out my podcast, check out my Strava page and my Instagram and all of my other social media things. Do that too. Okay, friends, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.